All right, so in this problem, we're going to be using polar coordinates to evaluate this double integral. Now, polar coordinates, um, you typically want everything to turn into terms of r and theta. So we have all these x squareds, y squareds, and all this garbage that we need to get rid of. So the three identities that we know are x squared plus y squared equals r squared, x equals r cosine theta, and y equals r sine theta. So we can use these properties to substitute stuff in. And now let's look at the two circle equations that we have. The first one is x squared plus y squared equals 9. The second one is x squared plus y squared equals 2x. Now, I can tell you just looking at this that this circle is this outside one. And the reason I can figure that out is because this is a circle with radius 3 on every single side centered at 0, 0. This one, it's a little bit less clear where it's centered at and how far it goes. So it's the one that's less regular. So for double integrals, what we want to do is we want to find the bounds first. So I think of bounds as sort of like you're drawing a line from your smaller bound to your upper bound. So your upper bound is going to be whatever this ends up being in terms of r, and your lower bound is going to be whatever this ends up being in terms of r. So let's solve for those x squared plus y squared equals 9. So we know that this is equal to r squared. So we get r squared equals 9, which means r equals 3. Cool. So now let's convert this one. It's a little stranger. We have x squared plus y squared equals 2x. We can still do that same substitution, r squared. And now we can plug in this little property. So 2r cosine theta. And now that we have r and r on both sides, let's just divide by r, and we get r equals 2 cosine theta. So our r is between 3 and 2 cosine theta. Cool. Now we want to find the theta bounds. It's pretty simple from this picture because you can see that theta starts at zero, it travels a quarter of a circle, and it ends up at pi over two. So this is in between zero and pi over two. All right, we're almost ready to start doing this double integral. But we need to replace this y, this x squared plus y squared, and this dA. So we've got our Let's use these same equations, r sine theta over r squared, and then we have we can just cancel that out. So we get sine theta over r. That looks kind of gross right now, but when you, you remember that when you're doing a double integral, this dA turns into r dr d theta. So when you multiply it by r dr d theta, these oh geez, what just happened? These two cancel. So we just end up with sine theta dr d theta. This r here, people often forget, but the way that my professor taught me is, but it's basically a Bart Simpson joke. It's like r d r d theta. Theta. It's pretty triggering once you hear it because you can never unhear it. But it's, that's how I remember it. Har dr d theta. It's horrifying. Anyway, let's get rid of that. Right, so now we've got our bounds. We've got our equation that we're going to be doing the double integral of. We can start doing it. Double integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 2 cosine theta, 3 of sine theta dr d theta. So 
um, we're integrating with respect to r first. So that one's just pretty simple. Sine of theta times r, and we're gonna bound that from two cosine theta to three. And then when you're doing these double integral problems, it's always important to include the other integrands because if you don't, it gets a little weird and the teachers take points off and it's kind of like really shitty for everyone. Um, so now we're just going to plug 3 in for r and 2 goes in theta for r. See what we get. That's 3 minus 2 cosine theta times sine theta. And we can just factor out a sine theta. So we get sine theta times 3 minus 2 cosine theta d theta. So now we can just do u substitution. So u is equal to negative 3 minus 2 cosine theta. We take the derivative of that. Um, cosine theta is sine theta, or negative sine theta. So this just ends up being 2 sine theta d theta. And then since we only have a sine theta over here, we are going to have to divide our du by 2 to get sine theta d theta. Now, kind of running out of room here, but we've got du, u. And since we've changed out what our uh, function is, we also have to change these bounds. So don't ever leave these like this or else your teacher will actually murder you. So, 3 minus 2 times cosine of pi over 2. This is just going to be 0. So 3 minus 0 is 3. And 0, cosine of 0 is 1. Times 2 is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. Um, the integral of u is just u squared over two from one to three and we just have a one half hanging out here so we can multiply it by whatever we get so we get nine squared over two minus one half minus one squared over two and all this times one half oh god this is getting so gross okay so we get four on the inside one half times four so this equals Two. Yeah. So it's a little sloppy at first. We have to like figure stuff out. But once you've got the rhythm down, it's pretty simple. Ooh, it's the end screen. Click on one of these links to be directed to that playlist. And don't forget to subscribe.